Right, Mashako Komani is SABC News reporter who joins us now from Fairlands in Johannesburg. Mashako, a very good evening to you. You've been covering these events a lot over the years, and I'm just curious, uh, what uh, particular highlights would you glean from the release of the 2022 metric results? Yes, uh, good evening to you indeed, Tepiso. I mean, when you look at these results, first of all, just that pass rate, uh, Tepiso, we lost so an 80% or an above 80% uh, national on overall national pass rate in 2019. Um, this was being, this year, the 80.1% pass rate being the second highest, uh, Tepiso, in terms of, um, you know, since 1994, in terms of that uh, metric pass rate or the grade 12 pass rate. But also quite interesting. I mean, there was, there was quite a lot of surprises. Uh, we saw KwaZulu Natal shooting up into the 80% club uh, with, the, with their 6%. They have more than 6% of an improvement uh, from the year 2021. But you know, it's a piece of, uh, when KZN, whatever happens in KZN has that ripple, ripple effect uh, on the country. Remember that they do bring in the largest cohort of uh, grade 12s at any given year between themselves and Gauteng. They have the numbers um, accounting for, I think, uh, roughly 25% of um, any class, you know, at, at any given year in terms of, uh, <clears throat> you know, a national percentage of what they bring into the overall metric, uh, you know, the overall metric cohort. But also, we also saw um, the Eastern Cape also um, improving. They also did show improvement last year. That um, happening again this year, uh, we see that they've moved out of the 60s. They are in within the 70s in terms of a pass rate. Uh, we also saw Limpopo as well. I mean, it was a province that was quite topical. Um, you know, it had been, uh, you know, lurking there at the bottom of that log. But it would seem that it, even though it is still there, they've also uh, recorded an improvement of uh, five percent earlier on when we spoke to the Minister of Basic Education telling us that they're going to continue working with that province to ensure, you know, to see how they can best help them, um, you know, to continue at this at this rate or at this pace uh, when it comes to uh, dishing out that th those results but we also um, saw it was uh, quite interesting you'd know traditionally or normally what you would see you'd have your um, Free State and then the Gauteng or the Western Cape, they normally fight it out for those top three positions. But this year we saw with the improvement of KZN um, reaching that 80s club, uh, you know, the Western Cape uh, dropping, I think, um, is to fourth place. But um, I am joined by um, the MEC for Education within the Western Cape, and he's just going to speak to us about what is the way forward, that although they have, uh, you know, they've, they've recorded, I think, a 0.2 percent um, improvement from um, their 2021 academic year but they have not you know they've instead dropped but they really haven't really moved much but we'll talk to uh, MEC David Weiner about their plans of the province what is it that they plan to do because they seem to have reached that plateau uh, in the 80s club Mr. Weiner thank you so much for talking to us Thank you. Well, I mean, we are absolutely delighted with the performance of the uh, matric class of 2022. We have extended uh, or improved uh, our pass rates to 81.4%. Uh, Nearly 50,000 candidates have matriculated and we've essentially uh, extended opportunity to nearly 50,000 young people who are now eligible uh, to uh, apply to universities and colleges which will position them uh, for the next step uh, in their lives and I hope a much better uh, future. So we are very proud uh, of the matric class of 2022. We also, as you know, have uh, the province has produced the uh, top uh, overall learner, the top learner in maths, the top learner in uh, quintile five, and also the second place learner in uh, quintile three. So all credits to the principals, uh, the teachers, uh, the parents, and of course the district officers who've pulled out all the stops and all credit also to the learners who never gave up because of course uh, this is the class that endured the worst uh, of the uh, pandemic in the Western Cape. 
Let me see. Let's talk about your future plans. You have been, as I indicated earlier on, you've just been at that 80%. But also, let's first start here. Are you happy with what that 80% contains? I mean, are children able to go and access higher learning? You know, do they have a successful chance of getting into university? It's one thing to just get the bachelor. But would you say, when you look at your diagnostic report as a province, are you happy? We are happy. I mean, we certainly haven't reached a, a plateau. Uh, our overall pass rate, as you uh, say, is 81.4%. I hope that we will be able to uh, improve that uh, next year. But I think it's also important to look at the quality of uh, our passes. Uh, we also managed to produce the most distinctions. And as I say, at the end of the day, nearly 50,000 uh, candidates who've matriculated who are now eligible to apply to universities and colleges and uh, that certainly uh, will uh, uh, position those learners I think very well for a much uh, a much better much better future going forward what investments are you making into the system um, you know to make it more efficient to do what you feel you needed to do to ensure that um, you know South African students uh, especially those in within the Western Cape are able to to, uh, you know, better their future using education? Well, I think the big challenge next year is to, uh, to get back on track, to focus on teaching and learning and how we claw back the learning losses that arose as a result of the, the pandemic. And that's going to require uh, a huge investment uh, across the phases not just in the senior phase, but also uh, in the foundation phase. And we this year will be focusing, as I say, not just on the senior phase, but a big focus on the foundation phase. We, for example, uh, have allocated uh, additional time uh, for mathematics and reading in the foundation phase. So that uh, one hour a week for mathematics uh, and two hours a week uh, for reading. Uh, which we believe is going to go a long way to, to claw back and reverse uh, the learning losses uh, in the foundation phase. And we hope to uh, roll out similar programs across the phases so that we can claw back uh, and reverse those, uh, the learning losses that occurred as a result of the pandemic in the Western Cape. MSC Wine, thank you so much for, for talking to us and all the best and congratulations on your uh, achievements in the 2022 academic year. Thank you very much. You've heard there, Tapiso, that was the MEC for Education in the Western Cape. Uh, MEC David Weiner just speaking to us about what are their future plans. Um, you've seen that they've received that 81 plus percent in terms of that pass rate, but also saying that they are going to be making those investments in terms of looking into the foundation phase because uh, these are the building blocks of a school child. Uh, they've ad added additional time for reading as well as, I suppose, mathematics or literacy, but also speaking about um, there will be investments that they will be making uh, within the senior as well as into the FET phases there to ensure that uh, because you know to ensure that learners are able to cope when they get to grade one but he also speaks about reversing the effect of um, the COVID-19 uh, you know the pandemic those were well, the restrictions you know in terms of the learning losses that occurred during COVID but he also speaks about you know the achievements of the province saying that they did um, the overall top learner does come from from um does come from um, the Western Cape. I think it's Rustenburg uh, Girls High or High School for Girls. And, they, um, and also they also did get learners as well doing very well in Quintile 3. So saying that they are, you know, they, they are seeing that their investments, they're paying off, but they will also be, uh, you know, ensuring that it, they don't just rest on their laurels, but they continue to ensure that, um, you know, uh, learners in the Western Cape are able to use education as that tool to make sure that um, they are are able to improve their lives. Back to you, Tipi. You mentioned, uh, or the minister mentioned earlier on the national context within which the National Senior Certificate uh, candidates were writing. But I'm just thinking, as you speak about the most improved uh, being KwaZulu Natal, we free, the Free State is on top again. And just each of these provinces having their own local context in terms of the difficulties they face. Some school is more infrastructure, some schools like KZN flooding, some it's the issue of poverty, unemployment. What about the learners themselves when you spoke to some of them? Did they feel that this 
2022 class had uh, amongst the greatest challenges than their cohorts before them? Um, you know, Tepiso, when we when we were here, the learners that we have been able to speak to that we know have successfully completed grade 12 would have been the top achievers. I mean, these are learners there with the, you know, the achieving or the academic excellence um, was not a metric. Uh, you did not just start in metric, but a lot of them that we spoke to, personal decisions were taken that this is, you know, they wanted to apply themselves in terms of their academics. Um, you know, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, when you hear some of these children, they were eating, sleeping, dream, dreaming and thinking books that, that, that those were the sacrifices um, that they had made. But you are quite correct. Every province having, you know, its, its, its own challenges, its own dynamics. Um, I mean, some of the rural provinces, yes, they don't necessarily bring in the big numbers uh, like you would have, for example, in Gauteng, where you see the big numbers. However, when you look at your issues of infrastructure, when you look at teacher retention, when you look at attracting talent, um, especially with, with subjects that um, would be deemed important for, um, you know, the, the modern world. Those are some of the challenges that they face. Um, teachers speak of, of, of resources. I mean, we've done countless stories where you see um, those, um, you know, challenges. There's also school violence, educators feeling safe within the schooling, uh, within the schooling environments. Recently, um, you know, we also had the issue of in some provinces, scholar transport uh, not being procured. Uh, uh, some learners having missed that first week of school into the second week of school. Many different challenges. However, for learners that we have had the privilege of speaking to, saying that for them it is a, you know, a personal decision that they have made that they were going mm. to do well. But I mean, we also saw a range of, of, of learners. We spoke to one learner from Rampatel and um, he had done well. I think he had done well in a physical science. It was, um, yeah, it was, I think it was physical science. You also get um, children that um, have a, a, a better experience in terms of life and a better support system. It's different as it is different in every province. It's okay. different for every learner. And, you know, the, the personal circumstances are different. Makako, thank you very much. Uh, as always, your finger right on the pulse on the education sector. Makako Gomani, who's been there all day covering this, uh, the announcement of the results. And, of course, uh, by province, what those pass rates were, what the challenges were.